Hi everyone, welcome to the Electric Motor GP show. My name is me, I'm your usual host, and today we'll be going through batteries for the EV cars. And if you remember the last video I made, I was telling you that I'd go into a little bit more detail about what the things you need to look for in your cars, and I promised that I was going to do a little bit more of a deep dive into uh, batteries for you. So this is not going to be a really long video, it's just going to be enough to let you know uh, a lot more about it. So um, the most popular batteries in, in cars today are something called the lithium ion uh, phosphate batteries or lithium ion batteries as general. And usually they consist of a cathode, which is usually either lithium cobalt or lithium ion phosphate and the anode, which is usually graphite and an electrolyte. Now, the reason why the electrolyte is, com is important is for you to know that every EV battery has got a liquid component to it. And this separates it from the um, solid state batteries that are being worked on at the moment. And the degradation of a battery is based on that liquid electrolyte um, eroding or getting um, contaminated over time. Now, when I mean contamination, I don't mean uh, environmental contamination. I mean the fact that it's no longer pure and it absorbs other things into itself, making it less effective in its ability to do its job of transferring electrons from the anode to the cathode. Um, the advantages of the uh, lithium uh, batteries is that it's capable of a good energy density. Uh, the disadvantage is that they're uh, other batteries that have got a higher density than it is. It's also got good charging times as well, but the predominant reason why lithium ion batteries are very, very popular is the lifespan. So if you remember in the previous video, I mentioned to you that the life, the cycling of a, a lithium battery is three times the, that of an NMC battery, battery, which means that you can get up to 10 years easy on an LFB battery versus an NMC battery. Um, it is expensive, but not as expensive as the NMC. And the advantage of it more than anything else with the improvement in technology. So for, for example, the BYD has come up with the BYD blade. And most of you will have seen videos of the BYD putting the nail through batteries and it not catching fire and doing the nail test with a few other battery types and it get combusting. So the lithium iron phosphate battery is probably the um, safest option of the lithium iron um, options that are available at the moment. The thermal runway is not as bad as other batteries and thermal runway is what I was trying to explain to you in the previous video in which um, once the, um, the battery does catch fire, it's very difficult for you to um, get it under control. It's more stable at higher um, temperatures than the other lithium options and it's more stable than uh, the NMC battery as well. The major problem with the lithium ion phosphate battery is the energy density of it. So while you, when you're talking about the old school lead batteries and the old school um, um, Lycad battery or NICAD batteries that the energy density is pretty poor. The LFP batteries have got significantly higher energy densities. Uh, if you look at the the blade battery from BYD version one, it's about 150 kilowatt density per kilogram, uh, which is the amount of energy you can store per kilogram. Um, and if you start to look at the newer uh, shot blade batteries that are coming out of Geely and from KM, from Ketel, um, they're capable of up to 190 kilowatts per kilogram, which is a lot. And there's the there's the golden battery from from Geely now that's capable of over 200 kilowatts per kilogram, which makes it even more energy dense than the previous LFP batteries, which also means that you get a lot more energy stored within your batteries, which therefore improves your range, which therefore uh, improves your ability to enjoy your car. The second disadvantage of the LFB battery is that it is heavier and bulkier than other um, lithium ion based batteries. So if you look at the new Sea Lion 7, the battery panel for it weighs over 500 kilos. So that puts it into context for you to understand why those cars are silly heavy. So the new Sea Lion 7 weighs almost 2.9 tons. Um, put it into context, 
uh, that's a mid-size SUV, which is the same weight as the Land Rover Defender 130, which is about, in fact, it's heavier. The Land Rover Defender 130 is 2.7 tons. So those batteries are really, really heavy. Now, contrary to most people's understanding of the NMC battery, the cathode in the NMC battery is still lithium iron. It's just that the chemistry of it requires nickel, manganese, and cobalt for stabilization and for the uh, other uh, combinations of it to give you um, the cathode, which therefore uh, gives you a different chemistry. Now, the advantage of the NMC battery using the nickel, manganese, cobalt is that the energy density is significantly higher. So as standard, you get over 190 um, kilowatts per kilogram on the NMC batteries in comparison to, to the LFP batteries. Um, the lifespan is slightly shorter than the LFP battery and the thermal stability is slightly worse, but it's also more stable than the EV batteries of old. So which means you don't have to worry about, um, you don't have to worry about the batteries and you don't have to worry about um, the the risk of, of of it catching fire. The major problem, which I discussed in the previous video as well, is the ethical um, considerations about the mining of cobalt, which is there's a lot of child labor that's used into it. The conditions for the workers are pretty poor. The workers don't get paid um, a decent amount to do the jobs that they're doing. The mines are unsafe. So these are all the ethical issues around the cobalt um, aspect of the NMC battery, which makes the use of the NMC battery um, complicated and ethically um, gray. Um, another variant of the um, nickel uh, cobalt one is the nickel cobalt aluminium batteries, which is similar to the um, NMC batteries, and you find it in some Teslas. Again, the advantage of this is the fact that it's got uh, higher energy densities, which therefore means that you get longer range from it. It's got a good thermal stability as well, uh, but it's expensive, which is why the longer range models of most cars are more expensive. Um, it's one of those things that it's in time it will get better, but for now, it's one of those things that the for you to get a good, decent range out of your car, you've got to pay for the batteries. And the bigger the battery or the different... The, the, the chemistry of the battery, the more likely it is that you're going to have uh, consequences for that for in, in terms of pricing. Now, I do know that uh, BYD is working on B the Blade version 2, which is supposed to have a higher density, uh, energy density in the Blade batteries for uh, uh, over 200 um, kilowatts per kilogram. And hopefully this would ultimately improve the range that you get with your car without making it too expensive to do so and hopefully once we're able to achieve that then the the pricing of uh long range models of the of the evs should come down now solid state batteries this is the holy grail for um for evs why i mentioned earlier on about degradation of the batteries and the corruption uh of the um electrolytes in the EV batteries at the moment diminishing the life cycle of the EV batteries that you have. The solid state batteries gets rid of the liquid within the batteries and thereby making it easier for you to get a higher energy density, extending the life cycle of the battery and increasing the safety of the battery because it reduces the risk of thermal runaway and the risk of the battery overheating. Uh, there, and th which means that you're likely to get longer range and get a lot more out of your batteries. In fact, it is said that if we are able to achieve solid state batteries, the life cycle of a battery of a battery can go from uh, from the ten to 50, fifteen years for the LFP and the eight to ten years for the NMC to about twenty to thirty years going forward. So, like I said, that's the holy grail. Every single major EV company, every single battery companies trying to figure out a way to make a solid state battery so that they can be the first to market with it. 
Now, more niche batteries that you're going to be talking about are sodium ion batteries. Now, why is this becoming important? If you're living in um, the temperate regions of the world where you've got winter and you've got problems uh, with your battery. So in, in colder weather, you the batteries in EVs become less efficient. It's more difficult to charge. It um, dissipates energy much quicker and it doesn't charge as quickly as it should. And this is because of the chemistry of the batteries means that it's more difficult for the batteries to, to function at the optimum. To get around this, most companies now put a heat pump in their car to thermal manage the battery so that the battery can be optimized to the right temperature before you get to the charging point and so that the batteries don't um, discharge their energy too quickly. Sodium ion therefore means that you get a few advantages. It's more stable in higher um, extremes of temperature, which means your batteries are more durable. It's cheaper than lithium, which means it's easier for you to get the components for your chemistry very easily. Um, it has a lower environmental impact. As you know, 70% uh, of the world is, uh, is water, and a lot of that is seawater, which means there's a lot of sodium available if you extract it from the seas. So which means there's a lot that you can do. So p places like the Middle East, for example, that do desalinization uh, of, uh, of the seas in order to produce uh, potable water for, for the environment will have excess storage of sodium chloride, which then the sodium can be extracted to use for the, um, for the batteries, which it means that it's abundant. Sodium is abundant. That's the longer shot of what I'm trying to say. Um, I mentioned earlier on the old school technology, which is the lead acid batteries, which unfortunately is still present in a lot of Toyota hybrids, and which is one of the reasons why Toyota is, and, um, uh, and Honda are way behind in terms of technology, and they're fo they've fallen way behind the Chinese in terms of uh, their battery development. Uh, it, while it's cheaper than um, lithium ion batteries and NMC batteries, it's, the energy density is poor, it's heavier, it's bulkier, it's got a shorter lifespan, and there's um, environmental concerns about the um, lead within the battery itself. So I hope I've been able to give you uh, a good understanding of what batteries are in terms of um, EVs. The next video I'm going to be doing will be looking at ADAS systems, what, what to look for, and how to go about picking the right car for yourself. Uh, until the uh, next one, please look after yourself. Uh, Please, if you find the uh, videos uh, useful and uh, helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. It helps the algorithm. It makes it easier for me to give you more videos and more content. It also means that I'm able to uh, provide you with access to the latest um, cars for you to have a look at, for us to test drive, for us to go through them. Uh, I've got about three or four videos coming through. I've got the test drive of the Zika X coming through. I've got the test drive of the Leap Motor C10 coming through. I've got the delayed video for the Sydney EV show where I look at the um, Deepal EO7. I look at the Xpeng G6. I look at the Xpeng G9. I look at the X9. And I look at the 009 from um, Zika as well. Uh, until the next one, please have a lovely time and stay safe.